how much should the consumer know and at which point does the bank or the seller um, stops having the right of saying uh, you read the fine print? Well, I too often we've seen, we used to see this with insurance in Australia in the 1960s and 70s. Insurance agents selling very low quality savings plan type stuff, very high commission. Now sign you up for $20 a week, I make $1,000. Now, what I call transfer of wealth products, where the client's wealth is transferred to the commission salesman and the insurance company. Appalling products for consumers. Re really dreadful products. And what I'd often go, I'd go along to a cocktail party and I'd see a director of one of these insurance companies going, oh, dearie me, this is, this is dreadful that these insurance salesmen are doing these things. Boards are going to need to grow up. And if necessary, they'll grow up the hard way, I suspect. A board cannot step back from the fact that it directs management, and management is the ones who produce the brochures and set the commission structures. Right. I think the idea of boards being able to wash their hands off mis-selling in time to come is going to be very difficult. Because while ever boards and management can say, oh, it was the salesman's fault, let's sack the salesman. Hang on, hang on. Who designed the product? Who paid the sales the, the, the commission? And at the end of the day, the board is accountable for that consumer mis-selling. And I do think we'll move into that world quite strongly over the next decade, where a board is actually saying, hang on a sec, if we're introducing this thing, it looks like an inflation-linked investment. It's actually a gamble. We need, the, we need the front page to look like a gamble. Is there a difference between investment advisors who are essentially from a brokerage environment as opposed to someone who is from, say, an investment fund env environment, as opposed to someone from an insurance environment? Uh, from a bank environment, um, are all of these different animals in a way? And um, what is the value that someone from your background brings into financial services? I think, look, I think the, we started IPAC in 1983. We were seen as a bit odd because we came from quite strong academic backgrounds. We, we were Australia's first fee-for-service advice group. And so here I need to carefully distinguish my comments. This is now, I'm no longer talking with my government chairman hat on. I'm now talking Paul Cliverello, director of IPAC Securities, okay. which I founded 26 years ago. And, uh, we have a, and here I have a strong personal bias. Uh, and my strong bias is that I believe very strongly, in number one is the absolute key issue is full disclosure. So in other words, if a product is in fact highly risky, it should be disclosed as such. The second thing is that, which we have in Australia for quite some years now, is that I think for the consumer, full commission disclosure is very helpful. Okay. I think if I can say to you, if you invest in this cash trust, I might get 0.25%. If you buy this tax scheme, I get 30%. If you buy this uh, property debenture, I get 10%. I think the fact that the consumer can clearly see the different remuneration outcomes for the advisor. In the perfect world, advice is really simple. In the perfect world, what you want is you want the consumer to get the best advice for that consumer. So if someone comes to me and they're paying me a fee to see me, if the best advice for that consumer is to pay off their mortgage, I can afford to give that advice. Yes, but your salespeople or your advisors are paid... They're salaried. Are they paid by commission? No, salary. Salary. Okay. Oh no, IPEX been salary since nine eighty three. Okay. Um, what would you say about banks and, and fund management companies to sell by commission? Uh, look, the, the, we need to be a little careful here. Is that is that it's very easy for me to sing my own song. I have a strong bias and I have a commercial interest in the success of advice on a fee. Okay. And so I'm very excited when in Australia I see huge organisations like MLC, who thirty years ago were selling very poor product for very high commission. They moved to better product for lower commission. MLC has now announced they will be fee only. So we're seeing some major revolutions. Consumers are getting sick and tired of free advice, free advice inverted commas, leading to them being ripped off. Right. So basically we're seeing a significant groundswell. But look, I've got to be honest with you. And I've got to say to you that, that sitting in my desk, and particularly as, a, as, a, as, a, as a, a consumer advocate, I get lots of people send me their advice. I've got to say to you, to be quite blunt, while I think fee for advice is, is the only way a consumer can be confident they're not being sold, um, am I offering the consumer something because it pays me the most commission or it's right for the consumer? We've got to be very careful. In Australia, that debate is very advanced, very advanced. And indeed. it's advanced because the consumers Consum demanded correct. for it, the media pushed for and it. And financial literacy helps them. And, and the fees were collapsing. I mean, yeah. the um, um, margin compression. The, the margins were, were collapsing in that way. Where do you think this is all going to lead to? Uh, the um, kind of businesses that are going to succeed? Yeah, look, look the, thing, the thing that's great for the bank, banking sector and, uh, and all of us is that the demand for advice is going to be explosively strong. Uh, people seem to have this idea in Australia, as in England, for example, they're banning commissions 2012 on. 
I don't think we'll come to that outcome in Australia. I, I, I think I'm, I'm, not, I'm not the one who sets these policies. I, I suspect though the reality is, is that I probably see as much good advice from commission salesmen as I do from fee for advice. Some of the commission, some of the bank people who are on salary plus a bit of commission, in my opinion, are actually doing a really good job. So I think we need to be careful about there is a perfect way for the advice to be given. We need to be careful here. It's all very well for me to sing my song. But look, I see some, some, some fee for service advice that I think is pretty ordinary. So I think really we come back down to full disclosure, training of advisors, professional standards, industry bodies, and all the sort of stuff we've got now about where does, an, where does, a, where does a consumer go to if they've received bad advice. So your complaints uh, resolution handling systems, which are quite advanced in Australia. So look, with my IPAC hat on, obviously I'm biased towards fees. I do actually, funnily enough, I don't really think Australia should go to a compulsory fee-only industry. I think we should be in an industry where consumers have very, very clear, plain English disclosure about what things are costing, about what the risk is. They know who they can go to to make an independent complaint at no cost to the consumer. Personally, I, I think that's probably the right outcome. Are these universal values or is it something very unique to Australia? No, no I look, everywhere I go, and I, I, I'm, I'm the Australian government's representative on the OECD, 43 countries turned up in Washington uh, who have an active debate and interest in financial literacy. Now look, we're all coming from the same place. What we'd all say is we'd really like the consumer to get the right advice for the consumer at a cost known to the consumer. Now, no, so, so no, we are coming from the right place. Thanks, Paul, for joining us today. Yes.